Welcome to Alex Cheese Aquarium, everybody. Today I have an update on the 1600 gallon system. It's been almost a month since I've actually done a full update video on the system and what's been going on with it. Had a lot of unboxing videos I wanted to get through, and with those, I, I I had a lot of things going on this last month. I actually just got back from my first vacation in almost four years and had a great time, a lot of fun. Unfortunately, when I came back, I had a few problems with the 1600 gallon system. It appears something got into the tank probably with my last batch of fish, which was put in about a month ago. And unfortunately, when I came back, I had lost several fish and my puffers were not looking really good. Uh, all the wrasses in the tank seem to be doing really good and the, the damsels and my hawkfish, but uh, the other fish unfortunately either got sick and, and died or in the case of the puffers, I actually took them out and put them into a hospital tank and I'll show you guys that here in a second. Everything went according to plan when I left. There were no problems with the auto top off or any of the other systems with the tank. Unfortunately, something got in there and I did notice right before I left a couple of fish were not looking quite so good, but unfortunately I couldn't do anything given the fact that I was going to be out of the country. Let's go take a look and see how the puffers are doing in their hospital tank. Well, this is a hospital tank I set up for the porcupine puffer and the dog face puffer. It's a 40 gallon breeder. I got it well over a year ago probably now during a dollar per gallon sale. I've had it sitting and I just haven't done anything with it yet. But when I saw the puffers getting sick, I said, you know, let me get these guys out of the 720 gallon if I could and get them in here. I apologize for the noise you're hearing, but a couple of hang on the back filters I got on here do make a little bit of rattling noise with the propeller. As you can see though, the, the fish are doing quite well at the moment. The porcupine puffers down here and the dog face is right over here. They've both been actively eating in the tank and I'm, I'm treating with Paragard right now. I, I probably could try to get uh, some CP or try to use some other medications. I don't really want to use copper with them because puffers can be very sensitive to copper in the water. Therefore, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work with this Paragard a bit and see how they do. I will say that the, the color on the dog face puffer has gotten a lot better since I put him in here. He was really dark brown and stressed out when I put him in, but he's since kind of returned to his, his lighter color. He still does have some stuff on his skin I could see, but he is definitely looking a little better. His eyes have actually cleared up a little bit. They were a little clouded over as well. So I'm going to probably keep him in this tank for a good solid month at least and kind of see what happens. I've been doing daily water changes of at least five gallons, a daily ammonia test, and the Paragard gets added once a day. I'm going to continue that regimen and just as long as the fish continue to improve, I'm going to stick with it. Let's talk a little bit about what's going on in the rest of the 1600 gallon system. Well, there have been some other things going on in the 1600 gallon system. I have added some things I haven't talked about yet. The main one being right up here, I finally went ahead and purchased an Apex. I got it about a month and a half ago. I haven't talked about it yet. I'm going to do a, more, a little more in-depth video on the Apex, what I'm running it with. For the most part though, it's running some lighting. The, it's acting as a backup controller for my heater in case my initial temperature controller fails and it sticks on. I have the Apex set up to turn it off on a high temp. I also have put a couple of other things on it, including the ATK, but I'll get more in depth with that and how I set it up and ultimately, you know, how I feel about it. It's the first time using an aquarium controller. I'll tell everybody, you know, some of my thoughts and feelings on aquarium controllers, what I like and don't like about them. Stay tuned, that's going to be another video coming up. Protein Skimmer has been running great. I haven't seen any need to do any further modifications with water flow. Uh, I've been keeping the water line right around here and every single week I've been cleaning this skimmer out. It's still not putting skimmate in the cup to speak of, 
but every week it is getting foam and dirt collecting up here in a rather thick sludge, which is fine with me right now. I think the only thing I could do to change that even more would be to add further air injection into the protein skimmer. If I do that, I'm going to do it via an air pump probably just to get more air flow going up into this neck of the skimmer and that should force any of the foam in there up the rest of the way. You might notice I do have the light off on the 150 gallon refuge tank. Also, while I was gone, a little bit of cyano uh, red slime took over in there. And for now, I'm just I'm going to leave the tank dark for a couple of days and see if that is able to kind of clear most of it up. If it doesn't, I'm, I might move into using something to, to clear that up in this 150 gallon refuge. I haven't seen any cyano in the rest of the tanks. You notice there's a few more wires and stuff in here and I have the two gyre uh, 250s on the 480 gallon tank right now. I've only had them running for a day and so far I'm really happy with what they're doing. I haven't really played around with the controller a whole lot. It's it's not a bad controller to work with once you do a little bit of reading on it. It's pretty simple to use. I have both these pumps in random setting right now, and they're allowed to go all the way up to the full power of the pump. But I have these on. This is only temporary. These boards and stuff that are hanging down are not going to stay this way because there's going to be some other changes coming pretty quick to the 480 gallon tank in the form of lighting. That's right, I'm finally going to get to pull the trigger on some lighting here real soon. And I don't want to hook up these wires and everything else because ultimately I'm going to have to take this whole light rack down and I'm going to have to rework it to accommodate the lighting that I ultimately put in this tank. But stay tuned, there will be more on that when it, it comes in. I've got a couple different lighting choices that I've decided on. And, if you're ever on Rico's Reef Tank live stream, I, I do talk about it on there occasionally when I, I hop on and my system comes up in the discussion. So more will be coming on that. Still having a good amount of calcium and alkalinity that are being consumed every week. I'm just using this Fred's two-part right now. Since I'm using the Fred's salt, I said, you know, I'll just use the Fred's calcium alkalinity. And one cup will raise me by about 0.3 dKH in the 1600 gallon system. So I've been more or less testing it and adding one to two cups a week to keep up with the consumption from the core line algae. The final update I want to give is for the 480 gallon tank. Despite the setback of losing some fish in this tank and the other one, the corals in here are still doing great. I have two bubble corals. I did have three for a little while. I purchased two when I was at the Chicago Aquatic Experience. Unfortunately, one didn't make it, but I'm not all that surprised. Bubble corals don't ship that great, and any little damage to the polyp and its tissue can really be a setback for a bubble coral. But I will say the other one I did purchase from the show and the original one I have are doing great. Been feeding them about once a week. The only thing that I'm going to probably change up a little bit for them is I've, now that I've added the two gyre pumps and I have flow going in a big gyre, there's a little bit too much flow coming back at them. So I'm going to build a little bit of a rock wall in front of them just to give it a little bit of a lull spot for those corals. I know they'll do a little bit better with a little bit less flow than what they have now. They're not being beaten up by any means, but I can noticeably tell that they're, they're getting a little bit more flow than I'd like to see for a bubble coral. So I'm going to correct that in the next day or so here. There's going to be a ton of updates coming on the system though with lighting coming in in the next couple of weeks. Hopefully I'll get most of that squared away. And then I'll be giving more updates on how the puffers are doing in their hospital tank. And that's really what I wanted to talk about on today's video. Of course, if you have comments or questions, please leave them down below. If you have questions about anything on the update or just questions in general on the 1600 gallon system. Of course, if you liked today's video, go ahead, leave me that thumbs up. Let me know you liked the content. If you didn't like it, you could dislike it as well. That's all right. Of course, if you want to see more on the 1600 gallon system or any of the projects that I'm working on or equipment, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. 
thanks again for watching everybody and I will see you on the next video.